So what is rendering intent and do we really need to worry about it? Well, hello, welcome to this photo speed video with me, Tim Jones. Today I am on my own. Vince is actually out of the office. So I'm going to look at rendering intent and to see if it's really relevant anymore and if we need to worry about it. Because rendering intent will affect how our pictures look. However, with the printers with 10 and 12 inks coming out now, in theory, they've got wider color gamuts, so it shouldn't really be as much of an issue as it has been in the past. I've printed off the same two images on some different papers, some NST Bright White and also our Platinum Gloss Art Fiber as well, both on relative color metric and perceptual, as in rendering intents. But don't worry, I will explain those a little bit more. Now, it's been a while since I've done a video on rendering intent. I think it was a good couple of years ago, to be honest. So I thought it'd be a good topic to actually kind of come back to and look at actually a bit more detail how rendering intent can affect our images. But before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe to the Photospeed YouTube channel and also go on photospeed.com and sign up to our newsletter. And also, don't forget to download the PhotoSpeed Art of Printing, which is a free ebook we've produced on absolutely everything to do with printing. So that's the housekeeping out of the way. So let's look at rendering intent. So let me start by explaining what rendering intent does and what it actually is. It basically tells the printer what to print in areas that are out of the printer's color gamut. So all printers will have a gamut of color and an area of color it can produce safely with all its inks. But if you've got a color that's quite vibrant, like a fluorescent pink or something like that, then that will usually fall outside that gamut and the printers will really struggle to produce that color. And if we didn't tell the printer to do anything, it would just go, I can't print that and print a white space basically. However, we, do tell it what to do through something called rendering intent. So basically, very simply, what rendering intent does is handle the out of gamut colors automatically for us and tell the printer what to print. So there's actually four types of rendering intent. We start with perceptual, then we've got relative color metric, absolute color metric, and saturation. Now, we as photographers, artists, etc., and with our inkjet printers, we have a larger color gamut. So we don't really need to worry about absolute and saturation. The ones we are concerned with in our world is perceptual and relative color metric. Now, if you use Lightroom, you will notice that you will only have relative and perceptual listed as an option for you. Because Adobe have taken this assumption that you're printing photographs or artwork through Lightroom, so we don't need to worry about the other two. That's the first thing. So perceptual will basically compress the color space on one end, so where you are kind of can push, basically pushing down on the out of gamut colors, and it pushes it into the color space to allow it to print the color. Now, this will change the color of that particular out of gamma area, but it will also keep a nice smooth gradient all the way through. So if you're printing color, say on this picture here, I've got the lovely orange here, which could have been out of gamma. If I push down on it with perceptual, it may change the yellow over here and the green in the corner here. So we don't really know by how much it's going to change it, but it will hold gradients very nicely. So perceptual could be very good for black and whites where you want to hold that gray tone going through. And we'll look at that a little bit later, just to see if we can actually see anything going on in black and whites. So most of the printers own black and white modes will use perceptual 
as they're rendering in temp for that very reason, just to hold those gradients nice and smooth for us. Now, what most people use, like 80 to 90% of people use most of the time is relative color metric or just relative in, in your software. This will map the out of gamut colors very accurately and try and get as close as it can within the color space for you. The good thing about relative is it doesn't change any of the colors. So if we go back to our picture here, we've got the orange here. If it's changing that orange, it won't affect the yellow over here or the green in the corner here, unlike perceptual. So that's why probably 90% of people use it most of the time, to be honest. And photographers and wildlife photographers and illustrators use relative color metric so it can match the colors quite nicely and keep everything in place. However, this will change possibly how your print comes out of the printer and could affect how you view the print as well. So what actual difference does it make on the same image on the same paper? So I'm gonna start with this color print here, and this is on the Platinum Gloss Art Fiber paper. So I've also got some examples here as well, printed on different rendering intents. So I wanna see if I can actually see any difference between the two. But let me clear all this out of the way and we'll look at these two prints. Okay, so I have two prints. They look pretty much the same, to be honest. I'm gonna do some... So, they look pretty much the same, to be honest. However, this one on the left-hand side here is printed using perceptual. And this one on the right-hand side is printed using relative color metric. Now, I printed these on a Canon printer, uh, the Pro 1000 with its lovely 12 inks. So the color gamut is absolutely massive. Um, on the Epson as well, exactly the same. It would be absolutely fantastic with all those 10 inks as well and the addition of violet. Now, to be honest, at first glance, I can't really see much difference between the two. The yellow, I could say is, I could say this yellow pop here is, it's a little bit, it almost, the yellow's a little bit more burnt on the relative version. I also think it's a bit more punchy and brighter on the perceptual version, but it is so slight as you start to look at it and go backwards and forwards, your eyes and your brain start to fill in the gaps for you. I would say also the green areas, the green on the perceptual looks a little bit more contrasty and a little bit kind of darker, to be honest. Um, I've still got detail in the shadow there. Also, uh, on the relative, this looks a little bit punchier, a little bit more green, a little more vibrant. The orange, I mean, that looks absolutely fine. I, oh, there's no loss of detail or anything at all. Skin tone, I would say the skin tone looks very slight. I mean, we're really picking hairs here. I mean, it looks slightly better to my eye on relative, but it's it is so slight. Um, hopefully you can see on the overhead camera that there's very little difference. And in the close-ups I do as well, that is pretty close to be honest. Um, there's not a lot of difference between the two. So let's have a look at Platinum Gloss Art Fiber, but with a, so let's look at another print, a black and white print this time on the Platinum Gloss Art Fiber. And let's see if that's made a bit of a difference on there for us. And it's held those gradients very nicely. So here we have the black and white print. First thing I have to say is, this is the perceptual on the left-hand side and relative on the right-hand side. Now, the first thing I have to say is the perceptual looks a lot more punchy and almost a little bit more neutral. The, now the perceptual is probably the one I'd go for in black and white. Um, it's just held, like what I was saying before about perceptual holding gradients really well. I have to say it has held in the detail areas, just on kind of the shawl here at the top, in those gray areas, um, it has held the gradient kind of moving from shadows to kind of a, 
the highlights that it has hold, held the detail a little bit better and you've almost got a little bit more detail in there and it's smoothed everything out for you. The hair seems sharper as well, to be honest. Like I said, I've used the same profile and everything, same picture, all I've done is switched rendering intents. So for black and white printing, I think that perceptual is gonna win out, in my opinion. It's just holding those gradients and things a little better. There must be a reason that the black and white modes, be it Epson's Advanced Black and White Mode or Canon's Black and White Mode on their printers, default to perceptual. And I think we can probably see it here, actually, of the difference. So let's move on to the NST Bright White. And as we've looked at black and white, we'll start with black and white over here. So here's the NST Bright White and the same black and white image. And the results are pretty much the same results, really. The perceptual's given a lovely tone, it's given lovely details, it's held everything lovely. I would say it's a little bit kind of, it's got a little bit more punch to it, perhaps a little bit too much. So you may need to just move down that contrast slider. I've gone for kind of a high key, kind of high contrast edit because that's kind of what I do anyway. However, in the face on the relative, we do have a touch more detail very slight, but it's not necessarily a good thing in the sense that we can possibly, it's not as smooth as the perceptual, again, holding those gradients very nicely. You've got, you can see a little bit more grain perhaps in here and a little bit more noise where perceptual has kind of smoothed all that out for us because it's dealing with those gradients really nicely. Yeah, a little bit shocked by that, to be honest, the relative comparing them side by side, uh, perceptual definitely wins out for black and white images. Um, and also I have to say, and also I have to say NST bright white is beautiful for black and whites, just because of that high white point as well. So here we are with same paper, the um, NST bright white, and we've got perceptual again on the left-hand side, and relative on my right hand side here. Again, same paper, same image, all I've done is in Lightroom, just switch between perceptual and relative to see the difference. Now, finally on matte paper, I prefer the yellow. I mean, it's pretty much the same results as the Platinum Gloss Art Fiber. Um, the leaf possibly is a little bit darker in here and has a little bit more punch to it. The yellows are pretty accurate, to be honest. You could say it's so slight. This yellow on the relative is very, so slightly burnt a little bit. But I mean, we're talking, we're really kind of, like I said before, we're really picking kind of holes in it. And the, yeah. But I have to say the orange looks a little bit flat on the NST Bright White, but probably a little bit more lifelike, to be honest. So that what, what and that's what relative is really good at. It looks a little bit punchier on the perceptual here. So to answer my kind of question that I posed at the start, does rendering intent matter? Now with these printers with 10 and 12 inks and things, it's probably not as much. Like I said, most people of like landscapes and still life shots and things like that will probably use relative. However, perceptual will give you amazing results as well and we've proved that with black and white prints I think perceptual is the way to go but we're not really losing any details and things in here I mean, we've still got nice detail on all of these pictures as well skin tones on the mat I actually prefer I'm swapping I'm changing my mind now on the gloss art fiber I like the relative but on the mat I actually prefer the red the perceptual it's just bringing things up a little bit more so maybe on matte papers it's worth just experimenting and seeing how perceptual and relative work for you. And that's what I always say to people, everyone's gonna be different. We get 100 printers in a room, we're all gonna do something different, so don't worry. The best way to actually test rendering intent is to get a sheet of A4 or A3, chop it in half, and then chop it in half again, so you've got two A5s, print one on relative, one on perceptual, and see which you prefer, to be honest because like you said, it's dependent on the look you want. So I hope that's helped. Not really any conclusive 
kind of findings, I have to say, does it matter very slightly, I think. And the best test is to do it on actually your printer to just see because all printers print slightly differently. Um, and also a good custom profile that we offer for free as well will help things along. So it's been quite interesting for me actually to actually see if that gap has actually narrowed a little bit. And I think officially, yes, I would say it has. These results may change with different colors as well, depending on if you're using kind of bright purples and things like that, or bright pinks or kind of really bright, vibrant colors, printers might not be able to produce it as well. So I hope that's been okay and giving you a bit of an insight into what rendering intent is and actually, if it makes any difference, actually in practice on prints. As always, don't forget to subscribe to the Photospeed YouTube channel and go on to photospeed.com to download the Photospeed Art of Printing covering everything in printing and also has a lovely chapter actually on rendering intent as well. So that's well worth a read. Don't forget to, while you're over on photospeed.com, if you haven't already, sign up to our newsletter. It's just right at the bottom of the main page and just fill in your details. So until next time, I'm sure Vince will be back with me next time, but until then, I'll see you next Thursday.